Next, Horner and her boxes make the 15-minute journey to nearby Ngamba Island. This tropical paradise is a sanctuary for rescued chimpanzees. It's four years since Horner was last here, and Billy, a female chimpanzee, greets her like a long-lost friend. Greetings over, it's time for the experiment. Horner demonstrates the movements to Billy. Now it's Billy's turn. Will she copy the actions? Just like Jessica, the chimpanzee copies the actions and gets her reward. But Horner has just been toying with both ape and child. This experiment is not about how apes learn, it's about understanding how humans learn. Back at the school, she swaps the boxes. We then present them with what we call the clear box. And this one is structurally identical to the black box, but this time all of the, the walls of the box are made of see-through material. And actually there's a false ceiling which runs right around the top here, so that all the actions to the top are irrelevant. They're pretend nonsense actions. And the sticker, or the food award, is actually located in this tube at the front. Jessica can now see that poking the stick in the top is pointless, and yet... The only action she needs to do is the last one. But for some reason, Jessica sticks faithfully to what she's learned. Even though she can see that the first actions are unnecessary, she carefully repeats them. Finally, she gets the reward. Oh, well done. Very good. It's not just Jessica. Horner has tested children around the world, and they all copy her actions. Not one of them takes the shortcut. What we found was actually rather surprising. We found that the children copied everything that I did, no matter whether they had the black box or the see-through box. So what will Billy do? She goes straight for the sweet. This isn't unusual. In trials with a dozen chimpanzees, Horner has found that two times out of three, chimpanzees take the shortcut. And this tells us perhaps that chimpanzees are not so reliant on accurately copying and imitating as we are. And perhaps it's less important to their development than it is for ours. It's a start towards explaining why humans and apes are so different. Chimps don't just follow the leader. They work out the most direct route. They want to get the food as quickly as possible. In contrast, children copy faithfully. It may seem like wasted energy, but in reality, this behavior gives us a big advantage. Imitation and copying accurately is a huge part of our development as humans. 
It's how we learn language, it's how we learn to interact with objects and acquire cultural behaviours and lots of the complex things that we do as humans. Um, and it's a little as if it's a sort of default for us to copy accurately. So it seems that blindly copying isn't so stupid after all. It's not just reading, writing and arithmetic. By copying others, we acquire thousands of skills and customs. In Victoria Horner's experiment, apes and humans both get their reward, but in different ways. Victoria Horner's experiment has revealed the first significant difference between humans and apes. But are there others? So far, we have outstripped our ape cousins. Our achievements are on a different level. We build roads and skyscrapers, invent iPods and atom bombs. We transform deserts into cities and put men on the moon. Is it the fact that humans learn by copying? Or is there something else in our DNA that enables us to do all this? We are trying to discover what makes us human. On the tree of life, we're closely related to our cousins, the great apes. There's only a few percent difference in our DNA, but somewhere in that genetic material lies the reason behind our place at the top of the tree. We develop technology by understanding the laws of nature. We can calculate the orbits of planets, use the principles of aerodynamics to lift a 500-ton plane into the air. We even build machines that lift us free of the Earth altogether. So how does our ability to understand the laws of nature compare to the apes? Our next experiment is a physics test. How do apes and humans understand how objects move and interact with each other? Daniel Povinelli at the University of Louisiana Lafayette has a simple but effective experiment that reveals a key difference between humans and apes. What we're going to do is place the object here on the ramp, the apple, and we're going to give the chimps the opportunity to pick up both objects and decide which ones to roll down the ramp, the light one, or if they're really reasoning about some underlying property, the heavy one. Very good, Mindy. The chimps are given the choice of using a heavy or a light ball. All right. But they just pick one ball at random. They don't understand they need to use the heavy ball to dislodge the apple. After hundreds of trials, chimpanzees will learn to do this test correctly. But it's obvious this is learned behavior. They are being rewarded for using the heavy ball, but they don't understand why. But will children fare any better? Will they grasp the concepts of weight and gravity? Now, which, ball are you gonna, which ball will knock the apple out? OK, you going to show me. There you go. This five-and-a-half-year-old gets it right away. Okay. In fact, children doing this test pick the heavier ball from the age of just one-and-a-half. We understand how objects move and interact from an early age. Girl. It's one of the skills that sets us apart. From simple structures like a mud hut right through to modern day houses, we know how to build a roof over our heads without it falling down. And one simple experiment will show why we can do this and apes can't.